Kia ora everyone. Kia ora everyone. If, uh, if you're one of the new guys, then oh, oh have I a time for you. <laughs> and to everyone else, welcome back guys and girls and all of those in between. Now for I have a story for you guys. Straight out of the DC universe and this story, well it's a fairy tale of a horror story. It contains luck of such enormous luck. Blind love and DCs. And the story takes place within the DC universe. It contains a DC. A DC who we call at the universe a DCCL. And L is for loser. And that C, well that C is a capital. Now for the story. Once upon a time, in a land not so far away, there grew up a spoiled little boy. His whānau loved him unconditionally, but they spoiled him. And how did they spoil him? You see, this little spoiled boy, whenever he wanted something and he wasn't allowed it, he used to throw a tantrum, a super tantrum, where he'd start crying and blowing shit out his nose and screaming and jumping up and down and stamping his little feet like an ugly little troll. And this little boy, this little boy stomped his feet so hard one day, little spoiled boy's body says, hey, stop that. And the little spoiled boy wouldn't. So his body contacted his head and says, fuck this guy, fuck this guy up. And his head, well, his head grew a huge fucking nose and says, now that'll fuck you. Now, <laughs> now that's not neither here nor there in the story, but you need to know that so that you wouldn't like get startled when you saw a picture of him come up for the first time. And this little spoiled boy with no brains, big nose and no balls grew up inside the DC universe. And then one day this spoiled little boy, he came across this thing called TikTok land. As he's running through TikTok land, he sees a building called TikTok. And so he goes up to TikTok, there's a door and he opens it, he walks on in. And there's a big hallway and in the hallway at the end of it, he sees a mirror. So the little small boy with no brains and big nose and no balls walked up to the mirror and the mirror said hello. And the little boy says, what? Did you say hello to me? And the magic mirror said, yes, I did. I'm magic. I'm magic mirror. And the little spoiled boy says, well, what kind of magic are you? Because if you're the fairest in the land kind of mirror, then mate, we're both fucked. And magic mirror says, no, 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 that's not me. And you're right, because I think even if I was, there's no fucking way you could be the fairest of them all. Oh, no, 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 I'm not like that guy at all. No, I'm the mirror of good fortune. I'm the mirror which is able to make your life peaches and cream and the sport little boy says no way and magic mirror says yes way i i'm magic the magic mirror of good fortune i can make it so that you can have very little even next to none and little sport boy says very little and next to none of what and magic mirror says talent of course talent i can make you a TikTok star and you don't even have to do stuff because my magic is strong and I can make a reflection of you and when people see you they think that you are the opposite of what you really are so I can make you a star little boy a star all you have to do is perhaps have just a little talent so why don't you do something for me magic mirror said to the little boy and sport little boy says well what would you want to see and Magic Mirror says, well, why don't you do an impression of someone? Show us your acting talent. And the sport little boy did this. You know why I pulled you over today, son? Go on, yo, man. Now you're fucking son. You better talk to me with respect, okay? Hey, chill out, dude. I caught you speeding on the freeway. License and registration. The only thing... And the little sport boy stops and then goes to Magic Mirror. Magic Mirror, what do you think? And Magic Mirror says, oh, my God. Holy shit. You are completely fucking talentless. And... My god, you, you could just be a head without a torso and mute and that would have more talent than you bro. And little sport boy was like, 
Really? That bad? And Magic Mirror said, Hell yeah, bro, you're shit. Bro, I didn't even know if my magic can, like, fix that. And the little boy jumped up and down and stamped his feet, and his nose grew a little bit longer, and says, Make it so, make it so. You said that you were the Magic Mirror. And Magic Mirror goes, Okay, okay, calm down, Jesus Christ. Give us a break. Oh, right, okay, I'll give it a go. And Magic Mirror uses his magic. And unbelievably, Magic Mirror's magic worked. And so the talentless, spoiled little boy started making really bad, talentless TikTok videos. And Magic Mirror made it so that people thought that they were, well, pretty average. And Magic Mirror made the spoiled little boy a TikTok star. And spoiled little boy said to Magic Mirror, wow, you really are magic. And Magic Mirror said, well, I have to be, as that's the only fucking way that anyone would subscribe to your TikTok channel, as you are shit, mate. So the little small boy in TikTok land looked around at him being a star, thinking, this is out of it. And then the little small boy said to Magic Mirror, I want more, I want more. And Magic Mirror said, mate, it's costing enough just to keep up the magic of the shower day and keep people thinking that, well, you're about average. And the little small boy said, I don't care. You said good fortune. I want something more or I'm going to tantrum. And Magic Mirror said to the little boy, okay, okay, look, what is it? And little sport boy said to Magic Mirror, I want a beautiful princess who will fall in love with me and marry me. And Magic Mirror says back to sport little boy, Are you out of your fucking mind, bro? Look at you, you got beady little eyes, greasy, shitty hair, and it looks like your face blew a nose. And sport little boy says, It wasn't my face, it was my head. And then sport little boy started throwing a tantrum and crying and screaming and stamping his feet, and his nose grew a little bit longer, but it's neither here nor there. And Magic Mirror said, Okay, okay, stop for crying out loud. My magic doesn't work on me, as I'm the mirror, and I can see you, and you are pathetic, so please stop. And sport little boy said, make a princess fall in love with me. And Magic Mirror says, man, I don't know if Gandalf has that kind of magic, bro. Sauron would shit his panties trying to pull this trick off. And sport little boy starts stamping his feet and growing his nose. And Magic Mirror says, okay, okay, I will use all of my magic and give it a go. And Magic Mirror used all of his magic and borrowed some, as well as took out a mortgage in the house to buy some more. And the magic finally came and a beautiful princess came along from a kingdom far away came along and saw that the sport little boy and the magic mirror made the magic so it she didn't see the sport little boy she saw the complete opposite in his reflection she saw a man and magic mirror made her fall in love with this man and the beautiful princess didn't know that it was a spoiled little boy instead. So in this story, it's a fairyland for the spoiled little boy. He has a million subs. People actually like him. Well, ones that don't know him, I'm sure. He's got a million subs, a beautiful princess that loves him, and he's living on that street in fairyland. What street? Easy street in TikTok land. Living the fucking dream. But then, one day... Just like any other day, magic mirror stops working. And on that day, the reflection from the magic mirror stuttered. And for that moment, the sport little boy stepped through and stepped up to the princess and smashed her in the face. And the sport little boy cried and screamed at the princess saying it was all her fault. And the princess was scared and crying. And the sport little boy took off and ran all the way to the place in TikTok land down the long hall and ran as fast as he could up to the mirror and started screaming and throwing a tantrum and said, magic mirror, magic mirror. Mirror, what happened? How can the princess see me? And Magic Mirror says to the sport little boy, Sport little boy, I'm dying. You see, your patheticness is so strong that magic alone to make it so that people don't puke when they see you, I mean, that costs a fortune, but it's the magic of the Sharade. That magic that is used to keep the beautiful princess blinded, it's just too much, man. I'm dying. I'm dying. And the problem with that, sport little boy, is that once I die, all my magic is gone. And it's not just the princess that will see your true self, but everyone will see you as well. And your life in TikTok Fairyland will be over. And sport little boy started crying and screaming and stamping his feet. And his nose grew a little bit longer, but that's again neither here nor there. And Magic Mirror said, stop, stop, please. I told you before, it's just pathetic when you do that. Remember, I can see you. 
and you really do look pathetic. And the sport little boy said, I don't care. I don't want anyone to see me as a spineless, gutless, talentless, brainless, manaless sport little boy. Do something, do something, the sport little boy screamed at Magic Mirror. And Magic Mirror replied to the sport little boy, Well, well, there is one thing that might work. Do it, do it, said the sport little boy. And Magic Mirror said, Well, I can use the magic to keep the people in TikTok land blind to your talentless channel. But there is a condition, little boy. You have to let the beautiful princess go. So she can go back to her kingdom and live her life away from you. That Sport little boy, that is the only way. And the sport little boy said to Magic Mirror, So all I have to do is let the princess go, and I can still be a TikTok star? And Magic Mirror replied, Yes, sport little boy, that is all. And the sport little boy sat down in front of Magic Mirror and started thinking. And then after a long time, the sport little boy piped up and says, I know what I have to do. And Magic Mirror says to the sport little boy, Should I make you even a bigger TikTok star? And sport little boy says to Magic Mirror, Oh, Magic Mirror of good fortune, you have used your magic to make my life awesome. You made people so as they didn't see me, how absolutely talentless I am. Gave me fame and fortune. Your magic gave me a life on easy street. A life where people who deserve it can work a lifetime and not reach it. It truly, truly are a Magic Mirror of good fortune. And Magic Mirror says to the sport little boy, It's what I do. It is in my nature to do what I do. And the little sport boy says back to Magic Mirror, As it is to be a mirror of good fortune in your place, in your universe, Magic Mirror, it is to be a DC in mine. 29-year-old Ali Abulaban is seen behind glass sobbing uncontrollably during his arraignment on two counts of murder. Officers found a man and a woman shot to death Thursday afternoon inside an East Village high-rise apartment. The shooter now charged with murder. The woman was his wife, 28-year-old Anna Abulaban, and the male victim has been identified as Rayburn Barron of National City. The details of this case were laid out in the defendant's arraignment this afternoon. Your Honor, the people are requesting no bail in this case. According to the court, the couple was having marital troubles. She was ending the marriage. She no longer wanted to be with him. She was actually planning to file a restraining order against him, and she had kicked him out of the apartment. But last Thursday, he came back, vandalized the home, and installed an app on his daughter's iPad to monitor his wife. He was at his hotel, and he heard voices giggling from his phone and so then he immediately left his hotel to go to the apartment. He ran from the elevator to the apartment. He immediately fired six rounds from his firearm. First he shot Rayburn Barron three times. Bullets entered his neck, his cheek and the back of his head at close range and then he fired at his wife leaving one gunshot wound in her forehead, again from close range. He drives a black Jeep Wrangler, the Virginia plate unit George Adams. He left shortly after making a call. Ali Abulaban then called the police and fled the scene to pick up his five-year-old daughter from school. He was arrested near the 805 freeway with a weapon. The judge denied the suspect bail and granted a full protection order for his daughter. The five-year-old is now with family. Did you kill her? So when you when you heard Rayburn's voice, you went to. I didn't recognize him. I didn't know who it was. But what were you thinking? I was freaking out. Oh my god! I caught her! I caught her! Oh my god! Oh my god! There's a man! There's a man! And then guess what? I hear. Nightmare. R&B Driving to the apartment. I'm driving, I'm screaming, I'm crying. I'm like, don't do it. What happens when you get to the apartment? I go up and I see them. What did you away. think? What did you think? They were nothing. I didn't see that. I, 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 I don't know. It, it was a blur. And I felt like I was on the passenger seat of my own body. When I opened the door, I thought, what was?
I don't know what the third. So the prosecution says that you admitted to your mother that you did this, and then you pled not guilty. Can you explain that? Um, no, I can't. I can't. Okay. But I got arrested. Mm-hmm. Did you have a gun in the I car? I picked her up from school. I picked her up from school. So that I could drop her off at a safe location at um, my dad's wife's brother, mm -hmm. who lived an hour away. But police um, surrounded me on the highway. Why did you pick her up? Up. From school. Why did you pick her up from school? Why wouldn't I? But you picked her up early, correct? Yeah. Why'd you pick her up early? Why wouldn't I? Did you know what had happened? About what? Your wife being shot. I'm the one who called the police. Mm-hmm. Reported it. I know. I found them. When I found them, my first instinct was to get my daughter for her safety to drop her off at a safe location. I wasn't running away, I wasn't doing anything. I had nothing to hide. What happened when you found them? <laughs> no. Oh. Home to home in Virginia. We, we, we had the American dream. We have two cars. Our life is great. So I said, let me pick up another hobby. I miss all of everything. It's my crap, it's my baby. I love what I do. I was, I, I, I wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And it was right there! It was right there! The weekend before all this happened, I was in LA at the comedy store. I was talking to producers. I was about to have a talent agent. It was right there! That was part of the downfall because my wife brought us. She wanted me to move her out here with all her friends to a life where there's Taco Tuesday, Women Wednesday, Party Saturday, Bar Sunday. And Ali, your family says that your social media fame changed you. They say that you were doing cocaine, didn't really care about the consequences. Nope. Are they right? That's false. My family doesn't know anything because they never cared. I asked again about his cocaine use. Do you think that made you snap? Do you think it changed you? Yeah! It messed up my brain! It made me violent, it made me, like, aggressive, you know? Mm-hmm. When I'm on it, yeah. Remorse about this situation? Now the TikTok star accused of murdering his wife and her friend is back in court for his preliminary hearing after it was put on pause because the defendant was in isolation. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell shows us why there was another disruption to the hearing. There were two outbursts from Ali Abulaban. It started when the investigator began elaborating on the relationship between Ali's wife and the man who was found with her after the shooting. Um, Anna inviting Ray to um, over to the hotel that she was staying at. Okay, um, Mr. Abulaban. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, this is news to me. It's that was Ali Abulaban interrupting San Diego police detective Christopher Leahy's testimony as his attorney questioned him regarding the relationship between Ali's wife Anna and Raymond Barron. Today, just before the investigator was finishing up his testimony, another outburst from Ali. Don't inject your own. We're going to need a break. Uh, let's, uh, let's you think I wanted this? Or I fucked your daughter? I wanted this? Mr. Bullabot, I need you to stop. Oh, my life is destroyed! Mr. Bullabot, I need you to stop. Mr. Bullabot, I need you to stop. 
This prompted the judge to call for a break as Ali was escorted out of the courtroom. The preliminary hearing will continue today. And again, after this, the judge will determine if there's enough evidence to move forward with the trial. Start this evening with the trial of a former TikTok star accused of murdering his wife and another person. And today in court, the jury heard stories about abuse and affairs. Ali Abulaban is facing trial for the double murder of his wife and her friend. In court on Thursday, several of Anna's friends took the stand, painting Ali Abulaban as a very abusive and controlling husband. On the other side, the defense was painting the picture that it wasn't always like that during their seven year marriage. And they also touched on extramarital affairs in this friend group and drug use. In court, Ali Abulaban Bullabon's TikTok video displayed as evidence. About a month before Anna Abulaban's death. I bring you to San Diego for what? So you can run to your friends? Her husband, Ali Abulaban, known as Gin Kid Online, posted this live video to TikTok. You're not even an American citizen. I brought you to this goddamn country. Name one man that would do this. In the video, Anna is calling 911 as Ali is live streaming this fight to his nearly 1 million followers. Oh, great. You were on the phone with police while I said that? Wow. I told her we all agreed she should call the police, and repeatedly she said, you know, I can't do that. I, mean, I just, I can't. Like, I love him. Like, she was defending him the whole time. She's like, maybe it was me. Maybe I said something wrong. If I was petty, I would tell them that she beat me the up too. And you know what? Goodbye to your little citizenship there, Miss Filipino. Anna's friends took the stand Thursday, testifying that Ali had physically abused Anna. They saw her bruises, and Anna would often ask her friends to help her get to safety. We would do things to torment and torture her and control her which to me is crazy. Anna's ex-husband also taking the stand Thursday, testifying about working with Ali on base in Japan. I'll be quite frank, nobody really, like, everybody thought there was something a little bit off with him. Anna's friend, Julia Stunts, recalling the moment she found out her friend Anna had died. It was like one or two in the morning. He comes down and he finally confirms that it is Anna and Ray that are in the apartment. Several of Anna's friends getting emotional on that witness stand. In the coming days, we're expected to hear from more of her friends and even audio from several 911 calls. For the first time, we're now hearing the 911 call Ali Abulaban made following the deaths of his wife and her friend. Full day of October 21st of 2021. As you said, we heard for the very first time the 911 call that Ali Abulaban had made to authorities to report that his wife Anna Abulaban and her friend Rayburn Barron had been found and shot dead. Yes, ma'am. My wife and another man were at home. I found him dead on the couch. Aliyah Bulaban, emotional in court Tuesday, listening to the 911 call he made on October 21st, 2021, reporting that his wife Anna Bulaban and her companion Rayburn Barron were shot. Okay, stand by. Okay, hold on, sir. Ali on the phone claiming he found the two dead. Tell me what you saw when you went in there. I saw my wife on the couch. Okay. Why Ali then hangs up the 911 call and moments later <laughs> San Diego police arrive at the apartment not sure what they're walking into oh. We got two down, we got two down. Police's body-worn camera video is too graphic to show. You can see Anna and Rayburn dead on the couch. As this played out as evidence to the jury, Ali and the courtroom were emotional. Have you checked the balls, guys? No. Check the balls. Check balls. Today, it was a lot of audio evidence. In court today, the prosecution played some very disturbing audio messages that Ali Abulaban had sent to his wife, Anna, just days leading up to her death. Take a listen. I wish we never had a kid together because of how stupid you are. And uh, I can't wait to divorce you so I can start my new life. You're going to be sitting on the couch, drinking your tequila, sitting next to your gym rat boyfriend with tattoos, who doesn't have the brain to hold a conversation, and you're going to watch Netflix one day, and you're going to see my face on Netflix. Hey, isn't that your husband? And your daughter is my daughter. 
So you're going to see my face for the rest of your life. These audio messages, though, are just a small glimpse at what was played. And most of them, you could hear him cursing at Anna, trying to control her in some aspect, demanding to know where she was and who she was with, telling her that she is not single, calling her disparaging names, and even talking about Rayburn Barron in a few of those messages. It just illustrates the general nature of how Ali would talk to her. And as I testified before, there were dozens of these types of audio messages on the phone. Um, so this is just an illustration of one of those messages. The man accused of killing his wife and one of her friends confessing to his mother on the phone after that shooting. In the courtroom on day five of this double murder trial, the audio of the shooting that happened on October 21st, 2021 was played out in court. We also heard for the very first time the confession that Aliyah Bulaban had made to his mom after he had just shot and killed his wife. Just moments before this confession. <laughs> Aliyah Bulaban opened the door to the apartment and within three seconds fired six shots, killing Anna and her friend Rayburn Barone. A longtime friend of Anna's took the stand Monday, claiming behind the scenes of Jin Kid, the violent demeanor was real before he rose to TikTok stardom. Um, this whole Scarface act was very common back then as well. He just always had to be better than everybody else in the room. He spoke down to a lot of us. It actually kind of made me distance myself toward the end because I just couldn't stand being around him. Um, he made everybody in the room feel uncomfortable. Next week, it's the defense's turn, and that's when we're expected to see Ali Abulaban taking the stand and testifying in his own defense. On the stand for his double murder trial, accused of killing his estranged wife, Anna, and her friend, Ray Barron, and he admitted to physically assaulting her multiple times. I uh, rolled on top of Anna, and I began punching her. Where did you punch her? Uh, in her face. Jurors also saw a video where a bullabon slammed her head into the end of a bed. I was outside. So outside outside. Doing what? I was outside smoking my joint. No, don't. Oh, now you want to do that. Okay, now you're going to hurt me. This is not healthy, man. You're not healthy. Abulaban admitted that he regularly used cocaine and was usually high during their arguments, especially the ones that turned violent. She tried to, you know, get past me. I tried to block it. And eventually I pushed her and she hit her face on the fridge. After you fired the first shot, you didn't decide to stop, correct? I couldn't. Ali Abulaban back on the witness stand, being cross-examined by Deputy District Attorney Taryn Brast, who is trying to prove the murders of Abulaban's estranged wife, Anna, and her friend, Ray Barone, were premeditated, a claim Abulaban has denied, saying it was a crime in the heat of passion. You wanted him dead, and that's what you did, right? No, I was... I, I just lost control. Brast says a bullabon aimed only for Ray's head, firing one shot at such close range there was soot on Ray's face. Then, instead of leaving, he stepped in front of Anna and racked the gun. Anna put her hands up in the air and screamed, right? For mercy? She was screaming because she was scared. And you made the choice to fire another shot. Brast said after shooting Anna in the head, Abulaban pushed her head into Ray's lap and placed bullets by her feet. Moves Abulaban denied, but he did agree that he never tried to perform CPR. You never did a single thing to help her inside the apartment, correct? I didn't think I was capable of it. I didn't know how to. You did not do a single thing to help her, right? No. 
Also during cross-examination, Brast showed a Bulaban's internet searches just days before the murders, including chopped bodies and decapitated heads. She also questioned him about another search for teen porn video, and that exchange turned tense. You want to pay me some kind of child molester? Show me. What, what, show me. What, what you just said. I've never seen that in the discovery. I've been incarcerated three years. You never showed that to my, my team. Where did you get that? And we actually saw a couple of exchanges that heated, definitely showing that Abula Bond does have a temper, certainly something that prosecutors have wanted to show the jury. At one point, the defense did ask for a mistrial, saying that the prosecutor misrepresented a conversation that caused Abula Bond to also get heated. The judge denied that motion. We are now wrapped up with the testimony. So tomorrow, the jurors will get their instructions, and then we will hear closing arguments. Closing arguments. Arguments underway in the trial of Ali Abulaban. TikTok influencer 32 year old Ali Abulaban is charged with two counts of first degree murder involving again his estranged wife and her friend Ray Barone in October 2021. Now the jury does not need to decide if Abulaban is guilty of murder. He has admitted to killing both of them. What they need to decide is if he's guilty of first degree murder, second degree murder, or voluntary manslaughter. He did say that his defense is, is that he snapped when Anna left him after she was abused for years by him and that she was hanging out with another man. The defendant felt disrespected by Anna and Ray. So he executed a plan and then he executed them. And their families cannot see them anymore because the defendant was so possessive and controlling of Anna that if he could not have her, no one could and she couldn't live. And any man she was with could not live either. A photo of his dead victims. He did that on purpose. He was proud of what he did. He left the apartment without rendering any first aid. Why did he not do that? Because he didn't want them to live. He went back into yell Anna so that his neighbors would think that he just found them. The judge told the jury that they need to decide if Abu Laban is guilty of, again, first degree murder, second degree murder, or voluntary manslaughter. The defense did ask for a mistrial after a line of questioning from the prosecution, but the judge denied it. Abu Laban has been incarcerated since the killings. The maximum sentence that he could get is life in prison without parole, but this is why he is arguing his case. He believes that he should get a lesser sentence. And I just got a text message from our colleague, CBS 8, Shannon Handy. She's up in the courtroom and she confirms that the jury is deliberating. In the Superior Court of the State of California and for the County of San Diego, the people of the State of California, Plaintiff versus Ali Nasser Abulabad, Defendant, Case Number SCD 292181, Verdict. <clears throat> we, the jury in the above entitled cause, find the defendant, Ali Nasser Abulabad, guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. Yeah. <laughs> of Rayburn Cardenas Barong in violation of Penal Code Section 187, parent A, as charged in count two of the information. And we further find the allegation that in the commission and attempted commission of the above offense, the defendant, Ali Nasser Abulaban, intentionally and personally discharged a firearm to wit a handgun and approximately caused great bodily injury and death to a person within the meaning of Penal Code Section 12022.53, Karen D to be true. Special circumstance as to count one and two, and we further find the allegation against the defendant, Ali Nasser Abulaban, that he has in this proceeding been convicted of more than one offense of murder in the first or second degree within the meaning of penal code section 190.2, parent A, parent. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Probation hearing and sentencing will be on June 28th at 9 o'clock a.m. in Department 2002. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the audience, please wait in the hallway.